Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through um, the lesson for 8.1. So not example problems, but the actual material as a review, not replacement of your classes. So this is Markov chains. And a Markov chain is a system that moves between a certain number of states with the probabilities of transitioning between those states depending on the previous state occupied. Your teachers will also call them a stochastic process, which basically means that there's a finite number of options um, and different steps, but that's not necessary in order to do the math. So in these chains, we have observations and we have transitions. An observation is a snapshot in time. So like right now, um, we could be in state two. And that could be our observation one. We can then transition from another from one observation to the other observation. So if an observation one were in state two, maybe then an observation two were in state three. So we have observation one, observation two, and then transition in between. This is the whole chain, and it can be modeled by two things, a transition diagram, which can be helpful to visualize um, the chain and make the transition matrix. So I'll start by explaining a diagram. We have circles for each state. So this is a two state chain and each arrow represents the probability of going from one state to the other. So this is going from state one to state two and they'll tell you in the problem that's gonna be probability of 0.1. And then like this arrow is the probability of going from a state two and then staying in state two. And they'll tell you on the problem that's gonna be a 0.3. And then from there, if that's all the information they give you, you can figure out the rest because these are probabilities of an event happening and they have to end up equaling one. So for in state one, we have to move somewhere. So we have the option to go to state two and that's a 0.1 chance or we have the option to stay in state one. So that's gonna be a 0.9 because one minus 0.1 is 0.9. For state two, we have the option of staying in state two, which is a 0.3 chance, or we can move into state one. And it's gonna be a 0.7 chance. So that's how the diagram works and it can be helpful to build the matrix. So the matrix, the ground rule is that the row number is the state that you're coming from or the state that you're starting in. And the column number is the state that you're transitioning to or going to. So that's really well into your head. Row number is where we're coming from, column is where we're going to. So for example, in this one, if we wanted to look at, um, if we're gonna start in state two and go to state three, row two, column three. So this would be the probability of starting in state two and transitioning into state three for this Markov chain. So think about if you wanted to do, go from state three to state one, which one then would that be in here? It'd be row three, column one, so this value. A couple of notes, the P's all stand for probability. Um, these are always going to be a square matrix because the number of states is going to be the number of rows and the number of columns. So here we have a three by three because there are three states. And then each row is going to add up to one. So like I mentioned up here where the probability of going from one state to the other for each option has to equal one, same thing here. So you look at this row, this row means that we're starting in state one and we're going somewhere. We're going to either state one, state two, or state three, but we have to go somewhere. So the probabilities of this value plus this value plus this value has to equal one. And that'll be the same for every single row of every single transition matrix. So this is a great way to check if you did it right. Um, if you're having to either build a matrix or multiply to get a matrix, check if the rows equal one, because if they don't, then you missed something, so go back. Okay, so some of your problems will have just this where we're doing one transition, so one state to the other state. We can also add multiple steps, so multiple transitions into our chain. And our general rule, rule with this is, and stick with me here, 
the probability of going from state I to state J in K steps is located at row I column J of the matrix P raised to the K, which can be written formally as this P I J K. So let's think about what this means. For example, if we wanted to look at the probability of going from state two to state one in four steps, we would want to find the value located in row two, column one of the matrix P raised to the fourth power. So basically for each additional step, you're gonna be multiplying P by itself and raising it to another power. So if P, and then this is the notation for the one step transition matrix P1, um, like up here we had just P, is the same thing as saying P raised to the first value. P2 is a two step transition matrix and that is P times P, which is also mathematically P squared. If we wanted to get like P raised to the fourth value over here, that means we have four steps as we said up here. So P times P times P times P is gonna be equal to P to the fourth. Okay. So in order to figure out what power of P you need for your problem, um, it can sometimes help to just draw out your observations. So the circles are observations and the arrows are transitions. So stepping in between those observations. So for example, if the problem wanted you to find the probability of going from a state today to a state in three days, we're gonna look at, so today, and then we're gonna move one more day, so P, we're gonna move two days, P squared, and then on the third day, we end up at what we're looking for, and that means we have, it took three steps to get there, so we need P raised to the third power. Do you be careful with the wording of problems? So this um, says in three days, if they had said on day three, it would then matter what day we're starting at. So sometimes they'll say um, today could be day one. So if today's day one, that means tomorrow's day two, then we have day three, then we have day four. So it could be in three days, but it's on day four. It could also be on day three, if they say that today is day zero. So if today's day zero, tomorrow's day one, then day two, then day three. So on day three or on day four could all be the same thing as in three days, depending on what the problem says. So be very, very careful when you're reading through um, what they're asking you to find. Okay. So some of your problems are gonna have this, where you're given where you're starting, the number of steps you need to make and where you're ending. And you would use this rule to figure out where in P to the K you need. Another option is if they give you an exact path to follow. So here we don't have an exact path. Maybe we're gonna start in um, state one and we're gonna move into state two, but we don't know what happened in the middle here. Sometimes they'll tell you an exact path. So every observation, what state you're in. In that case, you can just use P, find the probability for each of those steps and then multiply those probabilities together like we would for a problem from the beginning of the semester. So let's look at an example of that. If we had this one down here of you're in state two, we're gonna move into state one, then state three, then state two. What's the probability of following that exact path? Um, I brought out an example matrix over here on the right. 
So if we're in state two and we're gonna move into state one, that means row two, column one. If we're then in state one, going to state three, we want row one, column three. Then if we're in state three, moving to state two, we want row three, column two. And that would be every step of the way. You multiply 0.1 times 0.2 times 0.2 to get the probability of following this exact path. So that's an option for a type of problem. Okay, a couple other helpful notes. So these can be drawn as tree diagrams because we have stages and we have probabilities for each um, transition from stage to stage. So down here, I started writing out what a tree for this could look like. So for this problem, we're starting in stage two. So I wrote down two down here. Let's say then we're gonna move into, I think it was stage one, then stage three. So we're going from stage two to stage one. So this branch, and then we're going from stage one to stage three. So this branch, and then stage three to stage two. So this branch. So you'd be able to figure out the probabilities of each of these branches and then take this elongated branch as your probability. So we'll do a couple of these real quick. Starting in two, going to one. So row two, column one is a point one. Starting in two, going to two is point four. Starting in two, going to three is point five. Starting in one, going to one, point seven. And you get the idea where you'd be able to fill out this branch and figure out then point one times, let's see, Starting in one going to three would be 0 0.2. Starting in three going to two would be 0 0.2. So 0 0.1 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 is that highlighted branch and that would be a probability. So you can make a tree for any Markov chain problem. They're just really tedious, especially once you get more stages and more steps. Um, so it's a nice way to check, especially if the problem has like two stages and two steps, but um, it can be kind of time consuming and take up a lot of paper. The other note I had was that um, you can kind of minimize the amount of work you're doing if you're trying to multiply and get a P to the power of something. So for example, if we wanted to know the number in the first column, second row of P2, you can do the math for that one entry and then stop. So this was our P and we wanted P2 because we're doing two steps. You would multiply it together, you can get all of these numbers in here but to save time, we're gonna look at just the one that we need. So just the first column, second row, which would mean starting in state one, going to state two. And then if you remember how to multiply matrices, you would multiply this row times this column to get this value. And then you could stop there and use that for your answer and not worry about the rest of these numbers to save some time. Okay, so that was 8.1. Um, I'll do another video for 8.2 and 3, which has the state vectors and stable vectors and then hopefully some example problems. So I'll keep coming with videos and let me know if they're helpful.